Um, I, I, first of all, uh, to my friend, um, it's, there's somewhat of slippery slope in not, uh, I mean, for example, I'm a socialist, right? Um, I, I think that we should not be funding, um, at, let's say, MBA capitalist programs uh, that, that preach the value of capitalism. I mean, that's just my personal opinion. I mean, but yet the government funds huge, huge amounts of government money go to business schools. Um, in fact, more money goes to business schools and to universities that, that uh, teach the advantages of capitalism than, I would argue, go to churches, um, cer certainly. Um, the idea of, uh, so, so again, we're, we're back into is it democratic or not. Democratically speaking, I'm, I'm willing to shut up about MBA programs and let them exist. Um, so to, to move from that, then, um, you know, also uh, when we're looking at the, the beauty of buildings, uh, I mean, just even on an economic basis, and if we're concerned about dollars, uh, tax dollars, I mean, what would we rather have? Uh, a Westminster Abbey, which, by the way, all of these uh, institutions in, in Europe would not exist were it not for government dollars. I mean, they wouldn't be there, these buildings. Um, and would we just preserve them as historical sites for tourists, uh, which would be complete outflow of tax dollars, or if there's an actual congregation who's living, working, and providing charity in there, there's actually some use of the building, and the tax dollars are flowing both ways. So I would argue it's better to have a used building than simply um, a, a pretty building. And I, I don't think, you know, th this is true of a, very many of our churches. I mean, if you look around you, most of the churches in Toronto, uh, I would hope, would be designated historical sites. They're, they're not, um, hence condos are going up in, in their stead. That's too bad, I think. Um, and, uh, and again, uh, there is a room for compromises to get back to the original question. I think the compromise is this. According to my theology as a Christian, let's say, and it's true of Jews and Muslims and Buddhists and every other um, religion that I can think of, one of the core values is uh, social justice, is feeding the poor, is doing everything we call charity, right? I would think that if the, if the church or mosque or synagogue is not living up to its core religious values, which is social justice, they should not be funded. And um, propagating religion is really not the reason. Um, I mean, people haven't thought about this and discussed this for, for a very long time. But I mean, most congregations in the city of all religious uh, stripes would not see their core purpose as being um, simply to replicate themselves. In fact, if it was, they're doing a really bad job at it because uh, most congregations are smaller and smaller year to year. And most, for example, United Churches, College Street, I think of the classic example, Parkdale United, are turning more into housing than they are into worshiping communities, Fred Victor Mission, et cetera. Um, so, so again, um, I think that there is a compromise there. And I think you could look at churches even in terms of quality. I mean, because the denominations that I would consider being part of, you know, will ordain women, will marry gays, blah, 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 um, there is a discussion there uh, as to whether we should fund institutions that do not practice equality. I, th I think that's a discussion worth having. Um, well, I mean, the statement about business schools is a bit of a red herring, kind of irrelevant to this particular topic. Um, Oh. I won't say that. I won't say that. <laughs> um, also, I mean, I mean, you, you complain about the, the condos um, taking the place of, of the churches. I mean, I understand if you have an emotional attachment to a particular church, uh, that's obviously something to be highly disappointing. Um, but. Too much, too many churches is also a, a, it's a it's a waste of real estate. I mean, um, if, if there aren't you know if there aren't a, if not, aren't that many people who want to go to the churches, well, it's not really fair to the taxpayer to you know get them to pay to keep them going. I mean, um, they'd be paying anyway if you want to keep them going. The building is worth it. Well, I mean, if the building's worth it. But what I'm saying is, so like, if you had a town with you know uh, ten churches. And uh, they were all a quarter full each. Wouldn't it be better to have five churches that were half full each? That's what's happening. Well, isn't that more efficient use of real estate? Isn't that a, isn't that isn't that better? Yes, business degree. <laughs> <laughs> by by stealing that prime real estate, you're putting upward uh, upward pressure on real estate prices. <laughs> I think we should move on. <laughs> I think we've beaten that one to death. Um,
The next one, yes, let's move on to education. Um, let's talk a bit about the John Tory proposal, the Conservative proposal in the 2007 election. Uh, John Tory um, was decisively defeated uh, because he planned to... Oh, sure, okay, why not? Um, to fund, uh, I think, 100%, basically, through public taxpayer funds, um, all faith-based schools. Uh, so my question is simply, is this an appropriate sort of multicultural initiative, or is this a, a, a larger violation of church-state separation than we already have, uh, some would submit, um, for example, with uh, publicly funded Catholic schools? So basically, what do you think of John Tory's proposal? Uh, let's go to Greg first this time, if that's okay. Well, I'm very happy he didn't win, but... Um... I must say he's right on one thing. It's not it's not fair to give it to one group and not to all the, all of them. It, it it ought to be extended to all faiths or to no faiths. Um, and then the two uh, the two arguments that I think are strongly in favor of giving it to no faiths are, well, first of all, um, sorry, three arguments I guess. First of all, they, nobody's prevented from going to a religious private school. That is an alternative. Uh, secondly, it is grossly inefficient. I already heard from a member of the OSSN, which is the Ontario Separate school network, I believe, um, an estimate that it's <coughs> potentially up to a billion dollars a year extra to maintain an extra public Catholic school board. Um, now, to extend this to every single faith, that's, uh, I, I, the amount of money that it would cost to do that, it's just not very practical whatsoever. And then, then my final argument is it, it creates, um, it, it reduces, um, it creates social divisions. I mean, I, I, this is strictly anecdotal, but I, I, I feel from my personal upbringing, uh, going to school with people of all sorts of different backgrounds, it, um, it uh, makes people uh, more understanding of different cultures. They don't uh, view people of different ethnicities uh, in, in, in a different way than they would if they were segre segregated from them their whole life. And I think that if you divided everybody by religion, you, you're less likely to get to know people who are from a different background as yourself. So. I think that's a, a major negative to doing the uh, giving them to all. So uh, that's why I think that uh, we should abolish the Catholic, the Catholic school system and have one public school system the way that most provinces do, the way, the way that Quebec does now, which is ironically the way we got them in the first place, it was like a minority rights issue to give, uh, and obviously in the 19th century, uh, there was a big Protestant Catholic divide between the French and the English, and the idea was to give a minority rights concession have uh, Catholic school boards for the, the French in, in the Ontario and other English provinces and vice versa in Quebec and they scrapped it and I think we should do the same. Well I certainly uh, don't agree with John Tory's uh, idea and, uh, <coughs> Uh, so that's simple. We all agree on that one. Um, in terms of the Catholic school system, and I, I, I do know this for a fact, um, there's open access in the Catholic school system. There are lots of Islamic students, for example, uh, whose parents choose to send them to the Catholic school system. Uh, there's lots of uh, kids from all denominations that go there. There's lots of queer kids that go to the Catholic school system. My best friend is, is a woman who runs... Um, works for the Catholic School Board of WECTA, which is the <coughs> teacher's union, and runs um, both teacher's retreats and also is responsible for what's taught in the Catholic schools. Um, so, so there's open access um, to that. Uh, here's the problem. Um, this is what we've got. We've got a separate school system. We've got a secular school system. Uh, you will not get, the first of my friend's comment, um, you will not get a more multicultural school than a Catholic school. You should come to my writing and see it, Bishop Morocco Merton. Uh, most of the kids at Humberside uh, are all white middle class kids. Most of the kids at Bishop Morocco Merton are from every country under the sun. Uh, most of the kids at Humberside Secular School are middle class. Most of the kids at the Catholic School are working class. Um, my husband is uh, second generation Portuguese and went to a Catholic school. And his parents would not have sent him to anything else. This is something that sometimes gets lost in the argument that the folk that are ticking um, and getting that Catholic school system for free now would not take their children out and send them to a, a public school. They would send them to a Catholic private school. Uh, the Catholic separate school system is a unionized system with a union. Uh, the Catholic bishops would like nothing better, I can tell you, than to have this government 
get rid of the separate school system because then they could run a system of private schools that they would not have a union in, so it would be a union busting move right off the bat, and that they could control the curriculum of and get all of those queer women out.